I am now going to do an example. And the example in this case is going to be me drawing the free body diagram for the situation of a book sliding across the table. So that's really it. That's the whole problem. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually draw a little bit of a sketch. This is not the free body diagram. So I have a table and I'm going to have my book. Now this is basically going to be a side view. So this is my book. It's probably a physics book. I think our physics books are blue. And then we're going to say that its velocity vector is to the right. I'm going to give this some coordinates. This is my positive x hat direction. Up is my positive y hat direction. And it's sliding across the table. So if I think about this happening, I know that it's not going to slide very far. And so there's an acceleration acting backwards. It's slowing down. So now it didn't ex explicitly say that. It just said a book slides across the table, but I know that that means it will slow down. My table is not frictionless. So that's the situation. Okay. I've drawn a picture. This is not my free body diagram. So now I am going to try to identify my forces. So I'm going to circle my object, which is my book, and this is the way that the, uh, the book describes uh, doing this, and I'm going to think about what my forces are. I have the force of gravity down because my book is on Earth, and I see that my book is in contact with the table. So what forces might be coming from the table? There might be a normal force up, and I use F sub N for that. However, you could also use just the n vector if that's more clear to you. And then the other thing that's happening is that there's a frictional force and the frictional force is acting backwards. And this is kinetic friction because it is moving. It is not stationary. So those are my forces. And again, this is just a sketch. If I wanted to draw a motion diagram, then it would be moving to the right but it is slowing down and my motion diagram is not very uh, good at being in one dimension but hopefully you get the idea so v1 v2 a little bit smaller v3 i'm much better at this in pen and not on a little computer screen v5 and so we have an acceleration backwards which i can assume is constant but for the free body diagram, we don't even need to necessarily make that assumption. So now that I've done this, I'm going to do my free body diagram. Now, I'm in this case going to use the dot. I'm not going to use the, uh, the shape of the book itself. That doesn't matter. And I am going to do off to the side my coordinates. Now, the book, uh, all of the free body diagrams in the book actually show it right on the dot and that can be helpful if you have multiple colors of pens available or something like that it can be good it's just really important that if you do do these right on the dot that it's very clear that those aren't forces themselves so when the book does it that's true but if you're just doing it in pen there can be a lot of lines here so doing it off to the side is fine so now we are actually going to make our free body diagram so that's my point i've already identified the forces so now I draw my forces as vectors coming from this. And so this is my force of gravity, and that's down. Now my uh, other force, my normal force, is up. And my kinetic friction force is backwards, in the negative x hat direction, we can say. And then the next thing to do is to label your net force. Now there are two ways to think about this. One is to look at this and say, based on how I've drawn this, my net force is backwards. And it is roughly equal to my, well, right now it isn't, there. It should be equal in magnitude to my kinetic friction. And we can do this in two ways. One would be to actually look at what my motion diagram is doing, and I, or my initial picture, I had an acceleration vector to the left. I didn't have a component up or down. So that was how I knew that my normal force, my gravitational force, must cancel. That in the y direction, there's no net force. 
So these must cancel, and they were meant to be the same size, they roughly are. But there's nothing other than my kinetic friction force in the x direction, so my kinetic friction force is actually the same magnitude as my net force, which I've attempted to draw. So again, my drawing might not be that great, but I have managed here to include all of the important aspects of a free body diagram. So after all that work, there might eventually be a calculation to do, and that's going to come up in chapter 6. So next, in the next series of videos, you will see calculations arising. And in this case, if you are told what the acceleration is, you might be asked to find the force of friction. You might be told what the coefficient of friction is. This gets into, of course, friction, which is next week's topic. But whatever the situation is here, whatever you're asked to calculate, this should have been your first step. So now that I've shown you how to actually go from a situation to a free body diagram, I want to highlight some mistakes. And these are very common mistakes in, I typically see many students in a given semester make them. And what's unfortunate is I see students make the same mistakes from week to week and on their test and eventually on their final. So please pay attention to this. This, If you are making these mistakes, you are doing it wrong and you are going to lose points every time. And it means that you're less likely to actually understand what's going on. That free body diagrams are the foundation of doing the calculations. So if you're making mistakes on your free body diagram, you are likely to propagate that forward to your calculations. So the first mistake, so basically, I'm telling you here what to do, not what not to do. So don't put Fnet as a vector coming from the object itself. So putting it to the side is what you should be do, doing, right? So do this. And again, on the past slide, you saw that, that I drew Fnet, but I drew it off to the side. It was clearly not one of the forces that was just acting directly on the object. So please, please, please be careful about this, especially if you're going to label F net as F sub N. I sometimes just don't know if you think that that's another force or not. The next thing is to not label some sort of force of motion or acceleration coming from the object. So again here, the idea being that when I draw my free body diagram, I have my point and I have whatever my, whatever my forces may be, that each of these forces is a real force. And in the previous series of videos, I addressed how force of motion is not a thing, right? This is not a thing. You might think it is, but you need to spend a little more time understanding Newton's laws because there is no force of motion. And similarly, if there is an acceleration, acceleration relates to F net. So you don't want to label your acceleration on your free body diagram. You just want to label F net. And again, that goes on the side. So don't label anything that is not a force. Force of motion is not a force. Acceleration, not a force. Velocity, not a force. So again, you might have a motion diagram or you might have some sort of sketch where in that case, you can label that it, its velocity is to the right, its acceleration is to the left, whatever you want. But those arrows should not appear on your free body diagram. So next, make sure that you're drawing all forces at the same point, like I did here. They all originate at the same point and then point away. They're vectors. And we don't need to worry about drawing the shape of the object. Again, the only time that I ever do is when it's like a box on a ramp and I want to clearly show what the angle is. And you can still do that with a dot if you would like. So draw them all at the same point like this that is going to change in chapter 12 when we get to rotation but that's a very far uh, distance away you don't need to worry about that for now if you are in a situation where you think the point that the force is acting matters you have a problem because the model we're using right now is always a particle model that we can treat our object like a particle if you have to care about where the force acts on our particle well it's a particle it doesn't have a size or shape so that's a problem Finally, make sure that you're explicitly showing and using your coordinate system. So maybe that would be x and y, good old x and y. And obviously you can call that i hat, j hat if you prefer. You might instead use a coordinate system 
and again this should be a right angle but you know I'm bad at drawing that is for instance parallel to a surface and perpendicular to a surface that's fine so you can use whatever coordinate system you think is most convenient but do explicitly show it and again that should be shown on your free body diagram and the other thing that we're going to talk about is that if you can label angles it's helpful to do so if I know that this is theta and maybe I even know that that is theta is 20 degrees you want to show that so that should be on your free body diagram the positions the direct sorry not the positions but the directions of the forces do matter and should come up here